what prevents us from identifying human remains. In some cases, it's a lack of nuclear DNA availability. When remains are highly decomposed or degraded, the recovery of nuclear DNA is inhibited. So we turn to mitochondrial DNA. The issue with mitochondrial DNA profiles is that they are limited in their power of discrimination. All members of the maternal lineage will share the same set of single nucleotide polymorphisms, also known as SNPs, preventing the identification of any single individual. Further, individuals with similar ancestral backgrounds will share a haplogroup, which is a set of mutations that belong to a common ancestor. To create a mitochondrial DNA profile, forensic geneticists will sequence the control region, which is shown on the left. This region captures about 30% of the total genetic variation in the mitochondrial genome. Full mitochondrial genome sequencing, which is shown on the right, captures 100% of the genetic variation, allowing us to create profiles that are increased in their power of discrimination and increasing the likelihood of making an identification. If we take a look at this figure, we see that the left uh, represents the region captured with control region sequencing, while the right represents whole genome sequencing. If we use the RO haplogroup as an example, we can see that there is poor differentiation in the control region alone. Only four SNPs are required to belong to this haplogroup. Anyone with these four SNPs would fall into the haplogroup RO, making it difficult to distinguish individuals within this group. But if we look at the entire mitochondrial genome, we see that there are multiple SNPs distributed through multiple genes, and we come up with a much more specific profile the H4A1A4B subclade. The result of coming up with a subclade is an increase in discriminatory power. While the European DNA Profiling Group Mitochondrial DNA Population Database, which is also known as MPOP, reports 11,000 individuals belonging to the RO haplogroup, only two of these individuals belong to the identified subclade. My research aims to expand the utility of whole mitochondrial genome sequencing by optimizing a massively parallel sequencing approach for challenging sample types, such as postmortem tissue. Optimizing whole genome sequencing of soft tissues will make mitochondrial profile generation more useful because we will be able to get a complete picture of the genetic variation present while working with samples that are easier to process than the typical hard tissue, which is bones and teeth. While the identification of human remains is a complex task, the goal is quite simple, moving towards the identification of all recovered human remains and a future with no more Jane Doe's.